from Senator Collins, uh, Pingree, Angus King's office, drive them around and, and show them some of these apartments here and show them Capital Village, what, what we have for rents, and show them what um, the other, uh, <coughs> excuse me, more rundown apartments and try to get the rents increased. Because I think with rents being increased, it will help bring on new housing. Um, and the other thing is supportive housing. I think the supportive housing in this area needs to be increased. I think it'd be nice that agencies would come in and start getting in the apartment business again, start building supportive housing. And then um, the third thing is going forward, I just, based on my uh, losing money at Capital Village and other projects losing money, I just don't see a lot of new projects being built in this area for a couple more years until they're more financial stable, my units are. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Gina Turka, and I am the president and founder of the Maine Tenants Justice League. Uh, it's a new nonprofit agency created last year <clears throat> for the purpose of educating tenants and landlords about what their rights and responsibilities are and what the rules and laws are with regard to rental housing. Um, <clears throat> I've been sitting here listening tonight, and I'm really impressed with all the information that's been offered, but I'm curious to know how many tenants are actually in the room tonight because if we are dealing with rental housing, then one of the things that we need to talk about is how these decisions affect the tenants directly. Um, primarily because the, the, the foundation of what we're talking about is private ownership turned into public usage. And when a owner turns their private property out for use to the public, <clears throat> they agree to adhere to certain higher standards of care because they are receiving compensation in exchange for people living in those spaces. And when people live in those spaces, they are, as Mr. Robert Overton and Matt and Zarr talked about, there are standards that they have to comply with that are not negotiable, them being the life safety codes. I am a tenant of Augusta. I am a lifetime resident of Augusta. Um, <clears throat> taking care of myself since I was 16, so we're going on 30 years now. Um, I'm currently a tenant. My landlord is here, Greg Roy. Um, I live at 32 Court Street, which actually happens to be targeted for demo uh, demolition by the courthouse project that is going on. Because um, my understanding is the Perm Street, Court Street block is being targeted for demolition to make a parking lot which I find kind of interesting that the parking lot is being considered in light of this housing form. First of all, we need to stop demolishing buildings. Secondly, we need to rehabilitate the buildings that are not condemned and still under the ownership of these landlords who either are unwilling or unable to fix them. And I believe <coughs> that the majority of landlords want to fix their buildings. I do have that belief, but my experience tells me different. My experiences tell me that landlords do not know what the laws are. They do not know what rules they are bound by when they open these buildings up for rent. As a result of their lack of knowledge, that breeds noncompliance, which breeds health hazards, safety hazards, which breeds homelessness, which breeds all these other problems. So um, the Maine Tenants Justice League has come up with several programs, which I'll just summarize because I know the time is getting late and I have several people standing behind me. Um, we are looking at creating a tenants land trust, which I am hoping will bring on a, a, a number of community people to create a legal land trust that will be um, for the benefit of maintaining safe, decent dwellings for low-income tenants. And I, I believe the land trust is a more feasible option rather than the Augusta Housing Authority getting into actual ownership because we have the um, dynamic of change of administrations within the government body. And when administrations change, rules change. And when rules change, budget budgets get cut, programs get cut. So if the, if the AHA is looking into purchasing buildings, those decisions will be subject to modification 
during future administrations, which could very well nullify the project in and of itself. So I don't believe that it would be a practical idea for the AHA to get into this, into the, owning the project. But I do believe that the AHA is an integral part in the land trust because the land trust <clears throat> needs to be maintained by a number of people, including real estate, government, um, inspectors, landlords, construction, um, legal, so that all aspects are properly covered, properly administered, as well as tenant representatives. Tenants need to be heard as well, especially tenants, because like um, I believe, Amanda, you said that our elderly population is aging. I mean, our elderly population is growing. <clears throat> Logical course of that is our buildings need to be even more safe, not just minimum life safety codes. They need to have accommodations for <coughs> handrails. They need to have um, accommodations for bath accommodations. They need to have wheelchair access. There's a lot of other accommodations that the growing, <coughs> that the aging population is going to need over and above the life safety codes. So um, these are all the things that we really have to sit down <coughs> in a long working meeting, and not tonight because I know the time is getting late, but we need to sit down in a working meeting and talk about these. And the other programs that we're developing are um, tiny or micro house communities. Instead of the Coney Village, instead of the Coney Village, we could create a community with micro houses, which are anywhere between eight foot by eight foot square houses to 24 by 20 foot square houses, which can be built on mobile trailers or in such a way that they can be relocated. Um, we are also working on indoor vertical gardening for small spaces for people who are cramped in their small spaces but still want to benefit from, from organic gardening and that would relieve the, um, the weight on the SNAP program, the general assistance program, the food, the food banks and whatnot. Um, a landlord's rewards program, absolutely. Landlords who <coughs> um, do keep their buildings in good shape need to be acknowledged for that effort. It's not an easy effort, I know that. Especially with all the burdens that you guys have to deal with, it's not an easy effort, so absolutely we need to reward you guys for that. Um, also, I don't believe anybody here has made any comments about the Habitat for Humanity uh, Restore uh, in Bath and Bangor, as well as the Building Materials Exchange Network in Lewiston. And those are um, places where building, building uh, industry people bring their excess building material supplies for resale to the open public. And the um, Building Materials Exchange in Lewiston specifically has 95% brand new materials. Amanda, I'm going to have to ask you to, maybe some of these can be in a letter that could be sent to the group or something, but you've been over five minutes now. So can you wrap up? I will up? finish up. Thank yeah. you. And one of the other things, everybody here is talking about money. That's the core theme here is money. We don't need money to do this work. We need to come together as a community. We need to put in our time. We need to put in our efforts. We have suppliers who have products that are not moving, that are perfectly good for fixing these buildings. They're not being sold because the building constructors don't want to buy them because the homeowners don't want them, but they can be used. They need to be used. We need to come together as a community and bring in the laborers, bring in the product suppliers, the service suppliers, the government agents, the DHHSs, the AHAs, the CAHAs, and all the other agencies and landlords and tenants. And we need to come together and talk about how can we do this without spending any money. We all have time. There's an incredible unemployment problem. We can put people back to work and we can save money at the same time. Um, I do appreciate the time speaking. Um, I do hope that we talk again. <coughs> <coughs> and anybody who wants to communicate with me can um, call us at 207-358-8887. Okay, Thank you. Good, Good evening. My name is Dan Bernier. I represent the Central Maine Apartment Owners Association, and I'm also speaking on behalf of the Capital Area Housing Association tonight. Uh, the combined membership of the two associations is about 900 landlords. That's down <coughs> from about 1,500 landlords just 10 years ago. Um, there are many landlords, too, who don't belong to those associations. With respect to the Capital Area Housing Association, 35% of their membership actually lives in a building where they're renting units. S between the two associations, it generally runs about 70 to 80% of the members own let fewer than four units. That's apartments, not buildings. Um, there's a lot of concern, I think, first of all, in the apartment owners 
areas about generalizations being made about all apartment owners because of problems with a small number of apartment owners. The reality is when you look at the number of units that have been shut down or people who have had to leave their units from them being shut down, it's a tiny fraction of the rental housing in this area. Um, the, we would also ask that you consider the impact of your policies on the young couple that to afford their first house buys a two-family house to supplement the purchase and the paying of the mortgage. Or the elderly couple that to supplement their retirement buys a two-family <coughs> home so they have, a home, they have one unit they live in and another unit that they get rent from. The numbers I just gave you, we're fortunate in the Kennebec Valley in that the small landlords are still relatively strong. The reality is they're much stronger this year than they're in southern Maine and much larger communities where the larger landlords have been pushing the small landlords out. Communities are much better with landlords who live in the community and even live in some of the buildings that they're renting units in. And we urge you to consider the impact on those landlords and the impact